Welcome to episode 50 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week, my first time guest this week, is Warren Sklar. How are you doing, Warren? Hey, Dave. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, thanks for coming on. Um, for those of you who don't know who Warren is, uh, Warren, Warren is a uh, uh, IT consultant, but he also is on the very popular Mac to the Future Facebook group, right? The very popular Facebook group. Yeah, yes. about 3,000 members of that. I mean, I, I just uh, got onto the group probably about, about a year or two, a year or so ago. I'm, I'm really catching up with stuff on here on Mac, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it was, this is third year. We, st- we started it because we were part of a different Apple group that kind of fell apart. And oh, we're, okay. like, we're like, uh, hey, we could do this ourselves. And uh, uh, I yeah, created uh, other than your occasional trolls, um, but you, uh, it, it actually is a pretty well moderated group, and uh, you should check it out. I, I'm going to put a, a link up to the to the uh, group in the show notes for those of you who are on Facebook. You can ask to uh, to join, and if they they like you, they might let you in. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, uh, yeah ex- exactly. So, but that, that it's it's a fun group, and uh, and then of course, Warren and I are also hanging out with our best pal. Guy Searle, the crazy man himself, the, the, the host of the MyMac.com podcast. Uh, we do Mac to the Future Go uh, on Wednesday nights. And, you know, we usually have about, what, four or five people watching. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's fun. But I do it it's, and, it's, as well as you. It's therapy for me. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's awesome. That's why we do it, because we, we enjoy tech. And uh, it's, it gets me to play with my lighting and get, because we do video. And that, that also gets published out, too. <laughs> And it makes Guy happy. And it makes is, Guy happy. We want it, we want Guy happy because we like yeah, Guy. He needs to be happy. Yes. So, uh, but anyway, uh, today, uh, this uh, this week's show, we're going to hit on the news, of course. So always a lot of good news stories. Um, of course, because Warren is uh, one of the is a new guest for, of the show, we're going to ask him his uh, what what gear he has in the iOS world, and uh, I can kind of guarantee he probably has a few things. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, and then uh, we, we are going to talk about uh, the, the new Apple uh, smart battery case and then battery cases in general. Uh, I, have, I have an interesting uh, discussion about, uh, about the, uh, the case I mean, we're going to talk about. And then uh, two-factor authentication is a good topic. A lot of people ask about that. I wanted to hit on that a little bit more. Then uh, we'll wrap it up with another, uh, another good topic. And then uh, I know you, if you happen to have a pick, Warren, we'll throw one in there for an app. And, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. So, um, so the first uh, story that caught my eye was uh, this this silliness. Apple sued over not letting customer disable two-factor authentication after two weeks. Really? <laughs> so this guy in New York, Jay Brodsky, this is in Mac Rumors, uh, decides to, uh, uh, he files, as, as they say, a frivolous class action long suit against Apple, alleging the company's so-called course of policy of not letting people d- disable two-factor authentication. So, like I said, really, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, anything for money. It's. Well, I mean, what's your thoughts on two factor? We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna talk about it a little bit in depth on the to- on the topic, but uh, I think it's important. It's important. Um, so you and I both do IT consulting and or, or work, and not so much anymore. But it used to be no. when factor first came out, people really resisted it. Right. Uh, they did not want it. They they were scared of it. They didn't want the extra steps involved. And there's still a good amount of people that will not have it turned on. Right. Um, but it's, as you said, it, it's something that just needs to be at this point because it's too easy to oh, it does. Uh, guess passwords and things like that. Occasionally you'll hear somebody that has a problem where it doesn't work right. Like maybe they had a device that would show the, the uh, code that's not showing it, but it's very rare. Um, yeah, and as far as this lawsuit goes, I mean, this guy silliness. He makes some claims that aren't even true. He says he has to put in, yeah. he has to do factor authentication every time he logs in. So no, he, he doesn't. I know. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> so so he he's making a lot worse than it is. Oh, he really um, is. waste yes. of waste of uh, the court's time. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. Like you and I, who have all these devices, I'm sure, and we add a new device, the whole house lights up and rings and dings and yeah. codes everywhere and things like that. So it's, it's, it's a thing, but you know, at the end of the day, it's for your protection. Oh, I, didn't, no, yeah. I, I didn't know about that two week 
thing, though. I mean, I think that is true, and I didn't know that you could not disable it after two weeks. So that's actually yeah. Really I found out. Well, let, you know, let's save that for the topic. We'll talk about that um, uh, during the topics uh, section here, um, and we'll move on and finish our news here. Um, the second story, uh, iOS twelve point one point four. This update was came out. Uh, I've got a link in the show notes to the OSX Daily, one of my favorite uh, go-to uh, tech sites. Um, and they, are, of course, just like everybody else talking about this, uh, this now uh, resolves that serious group FaceTime security flaw that existed in previous builds because you know all those steps you had to go, the easy steps that you had to go through to get it to somebody to connect to your FaceTime and spy on you. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it, it was a small update, 98 megabytes took very little time to update, but uh, what did you think about the face, the whole FaceTime thing? Um, so with the, well, first of all, with the update, just um, it's interesting as, as you know, they don't let you use group FaceTime unless you have the update. So I made my family do the update, even though they probably don't even know what group <laughs> FaceTime is. So I'm like, just do the update. Just trust me about that. Um, and of course, if you're on beta software, right. you cannot use group FaceTime. I'm, Probably thinking tomorrow, what are we on Monday now? Uh, I'm guessing tomorrow or Wednesday, there'll be a, a beta out to address sure. that for beta testers. Um, yeah, the, the bug was real. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, not a good look for Apple. Um, the first day or two was really hairy for them because they mm-hmm. um, took a while to acknowledge it. There was room, you know, they were, then they started to. Uh, surface that they might have known about it for a couple of days, um, but they 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 made up for it. I think they 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 went out to the kid's house. Uh, some I don't know who they sent, but they sent somebody there. They're going to give them some money, give them some uh, um, recognition. Oh, they and, well as well they should. I think wasn't the kid within then he read the mother really told the the kid not to say anything. Was that what it was? Uh, no, I'm not sure. No, the the kid told the mother and the mother tried to tell Apple and Apple like laughed at her. <laughs> they're like, go files a, a bug report. They have a radar yeah. program. Yeah. Feedback so, at apple.com. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, if I, like I don't even know how to do it. Uh, yeah. um, there was no, there's another bug out there where they're not telling Apple. Uh, mm, of course. You know, in Mac OS, but that's maybe different. Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be bugs. We oh, can't, absolutely. You know, this is not the first time. It's not going to be the last time. And, uh, you know, it, it's how a company deals with it is really the, the main factor. Um, and then, of course, everybody got all panicky. Government agents. Exactly. They were going to ask questions to Apple and things like that. You know, I, I, no, I, it, I just it, shook my head. I I just, how much press this got was just beyond recognition. I mean, you got all the mainstream media, all the magazines, all the websites. It, it, yeah, it was, it happened. It happened. It's a bug. I mean, but all the steps you had to go through to actually enable it for it to happen were enough that it took a little bit, don't you think? Well, once it was, once the word was out, people knew how to do it. So in the time... In the time that the word came out, I think that day in the morning, people knew how to do it. it I think around what it was like two or three o'clock, they, they disabled the, the FaceTime. Yeah. So in theory, there was a few hours where somebody could have, you know, used it. I wish I would have probably spied on a few people. I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance to. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's well, not good. Anyway, it's go out. It's all good. Update it, run the updates. Uh, we, I know you, you, Warren, as well as I, always recommend when there are updates come out, just run them. I mean, the, the Apple has release them just because they want to. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've had a few in the past where, and I've talked about them on previous episodes where sometimes there was a bug with the bug that it fixed, but and it's it's rare that it happens. But very rare. It used to be. I mean, it used to be. You know, people who are older than us have. Um, yeah. A tendency not to want to update um, patches and things like that yeah. because back then it was a little bit different. Um, and, and in the Facebook group, you'll see yeah. not so much our group, but you'll see um, iOS twelve point blah 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 is out. Should I update? And Always it's like that question. Yes, everybody asks. I'm like, 
Yes, go for uh, it. You, know. you and I both get that question asked probably every single time Apple releases an update. My friends do it all the time. I mean, I'm sure yours as well and all your all your clients too. And we never say no and they still don't learn. So. They still don't learn. So, but go out, update it. And of all of those you guys out there listening, guys and gals are listening, I always say you update it and uh, don't worry about it. it, it if it's a problem, it, it it's rare. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, let's, uh, we'll move on to the next article. Uh, actually, you and I talked about this last week during um, the Mac of the Future Go uh, show, and I figured uh, I'd like my listeners to hear about it as well because um, I'm really irritated about it and so absolutely pleased I have walked away from AT&T. So as AT&T is sued by Sprint for misleading uh, the 5GE brand branding and what that is is it's a 5g evolution which is which is supposed to be the next stuff uh, the, the next version of 5g which isn't out yet so they're misleading customers by you know you, you go onto the phone and it says all of a sudden from it being 4g or lte uh to 5ge hmm that's a little confusing and a little misleading if you ask me well mm-hmm. like, like i said in the article it, it has it isn't going to get released until at least 2020 and you know sprint and t-mobile of course are working on a merger so and um, once that merger uh, happens which more than likely will um that's going they're they're talking about accelerating getting 5g in place so um but yeah then now sprint uh, wants att to stop from using that damaging branding that, that, that that's uh that's out there so and, and in fact the uh, at&t provided a, a statement saying uh uh, uh, saying that uh, what, uh, we understand why our competitors don't like what we are doing. Well, yeah, <laughs> I don't think customers do either. Uh, but our uh, and they say our customers love it. Whatever. <laughs> so, so and it goes on and on. But what what what's your thoughts on this? Um, my real thought is I'm actually more surprised. Uh, instead of suing that these other companies don't just copy and follow suit to like and say yeah. hey if AT and T is doing it not hey. Um, we're, mine is five, uh, Sprint has five super crazy EG, whatever. Um, because evidently the phone maker, Apple and, and uh, Android doesn't seem to mind. Yeah, apparently. So, I mean, if, 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 the, if they want to play that game, then it could get into that kind of game where people are just misleading uh, or yeah. misleading data. Um, I mean, the reality is, the you know the average person out there doesn't really even understand the difference between 3G, 4G, LTE, True. 5G. Um, you know, a lot of people are just hearing news stories about maybe 5G, and you know, in their mind they're just like, hey, maybe maybe it's faster. But a lot of people don't, don't even know that. Like I get people asking me all the time, what's the difference between the, the bands? Yeah. Um, right. So you know, it's it's sneaky. I think. Uh, it's funny that Sprint's suing, and you know, yeah. one one company is suing the other company over it. Mm-hmm. Um, marketing, <laughs> marketing. Yeah, really yeah. they don't want to marketing something that it really isn't, isn't really what it is. So, and it's, it, but it is right. It's something. It's an enhanced. I think it's an enhanced version of what they have Up now. Up to 4G LTE, <laughs> really. Yeah. But it's a little oh. bit fast, maybe a little bit faster than their normal LTE. Mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Either way, I was I had been extremely unhappy with AT and T, especially with their pricing. And I've talked about this before. And I moved on to T Mobile. I'm, <laughs> I'm very happy with them. So, uh, so you like T Mobile? Okay. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I have Verizon. I went from AT and T to Verizon, and okay. uh, you know, I couldn't tell you if it's any better or different. The cost nah. value. I like the perks. It really is what T-Mobile provides. <laughs> and then, I mean, Taco Tuesday, man. <laughs> I, got, I got my taco last week. At, uh, yeah. If anybody know that, uh, T-Mobile Tuesdays, they have uh, free yeah, stuff. That's right. I think uh, I think it's a taco week. And then, you know, they, you get free Netflix. You get, uh, I think MLB at bat's going to be probably available again. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers at this again. They've done it for the last uh, two or three years. So, uh, and, you know, so a lot of, a lot of cool n- nifty things. And, um uh, and the CEO of T-Mobile, John Leisure, is such a is such a trip. I don't know if you ever follow it's anything crazy. on, yeah, uh, on social media. He already because T-Mobile just 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 blew away their earnings uh, for this past uh, uh, this past uh, uh, quarter. He's going to dye his hair magenta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in that case. I mean, I, he's in so that case. anyway, I have I have Verizon and I have FiOS here, um, yeah. and I 
enterprise on the phone and we probably pay like three thousand dollars a day for them and i'll, I'll call them up yeah. and i'll say hey listen we're paying all this money to you well, you know give me something and they're like uh you got hbo for like a month for free i'm like all right that's mm, okay yeah, that's so, okay <laughs> anyway uh next article i wanted to talk about was uh, uh this was a nine to five mac uh this was a comment but uh a comment piece, but uh, but there's a lot. There was a lot of news about it too on other sites. Um, Apple is taking its in-store iPhone push too far by promoting upgrades instead of repairs. Now, it's no secret that Apple is trying to be pushing upgrades. I mean, I was just in the Apple store the other day. It's my uh, my friend uh, uh, broke a screen on his uh, iPhone SE, and he had to bring it in. They brought it in. They re- they replaced the screen for him. 129 bucks later, and then they couldn't get get they couldn't uh, get the digitizer to sync so uh so i told them yeah you, you if they're gonna give you a free phone a replacement phone i would do it so you know i was kind of surprised i was waiting to see it because i knew this article was it was already out there when i was at the store and i, and I wanted to see if uh, you know that they're going to start pushing uh hey can you really what you should do is trade this phone in and get an iphone at 10 10 r or a 10s or 10s max um and you know and and, and they said it's a new policy that's uh that uh, Apple retail employees are, are being told to do uh, by the te- by the tax. So, I, I, what do you think of this? I mean, I, I, I could see why they would be. No, no, I me guess. too. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if the sales are down on that, um, and every other company in the world does it, um, yep. because Apple historically hasn't been that kind of company, it, it's an issue, I guess. Not an issue. It's it's a conversation piece, right? Uh, so you know, I, I could see them doing it. Um, you know, I've been in Apple stores where I, I don't personally, you know, I'll listen in. I never really hear. Yeah, me either. Awesome. I never really hear like uh, high high sales pitches, things like that. In fact, you know, if you if you hang out long enough, you'll see people coming in with like, you know, equipment that's older than you know my my son who's fifteen years. Yeah. You know, work, work at the Genius Bar, and you know they'll they'll happily they'll happily help you. I mean, they're oh, yeah. they're not yeah they're you know I don't they're not commission based. I don't think. I mean, this was they're not com- commission based, but this was, I guess, a corporate decision to push right. the new phone in particular um, because because the sales were bad this year. And you know what? I good for them. I don't. I don't blame yeah. them if that's the case. And you know, every other company does it. And you know, a lot of people, you know, hang on to old phones. And you know, it, as well they should. They should, but it's a thing we use every day. It's, it's, it's you know it's something that's you know, we're using constantly. Yeah. And the, the minute people complain to me about their phone not being able to do this or it's old or that, and it's three or four years old, I'm like, you know what? You know, it, it's something you're going to want to place it's something that you use enough and you know it, it, it's going to make you unhappy if you if you don't enjoy the experience yeah oh exactly and i've talked about this on many episodes re- relating to you designing <laughs> which phone you want and not want um and um you know what uh it's your choice. That's what I love about Apple. And I love the fact that you could go as far back as a, as an iPhone five S and still be satisfied, you know, with what it does because Apple is still supporting it with the latest OS. Now, obviously, you know, with iOS 13 potentially coming out soon, uh, then some of those other older phones are probably going to start to be sliding off. I would not be surprised if this, the five S is at end of life and the six and possibly the six S you never know. Um, but, uh, time will tell, we'll obviously be here talking about it, uh, what it does, but, but the great thing is that there are a lot of people out there with older phones and, and they're current, you know, compare that to Android with older phones that are four years out on, on security updates. So, uh, so just think of it that way if, for us being, uh, iOS and iPhone, uh, users. So, um, the last story we want to talk about is I caught th- this one was, was making the rounds on shows, um, uh, uh, around, around the internet, um, many popular iPhone apps are secretly recording your screen without asking. There's no way a user would know. I don't know if you, mm-hmm. if you reviewed this article or not, but um, yeah. they're talking about major companies like Air Canada, and Expedia, Hollister were recording every tap and swipe you made on iPhone apps. Now, of course, this is in TechCrunch, and sometimes I can I question some of the things that TechCrunch writes, uh, but uh, I. I could see it happening. Um, you know, they're trying, basically, I think what they're really doing, I don't think they're looking at your private information. I think there's really where there's looking to what you're, what you're doing as far as, you know, to get trends, don't you think? 
Yeah, no, I made this, I made a point in, in the, uh, maybe last week to you guys or somebody, but yeah, you know, Apple's secure, um, they're privacy focused, mm -hmm. but when you install a, an app, it, it says, you know, give me permission for this and that and that. And at that point, you know, Apple kind of is passing it over and say, listen, they're getting, you know, you're giving them access. Right. Apple starts to get a little annoyed when you, they say you're going to, we're going to access it for this and that, and then they use it for something else. And that, that's when they put the brakes on and say, right. no, you're not, uh, you, you, you said you couldn't do this, but you're doing that. So that's no good. Um, but yeah, it's again, these things are, you know, internet connected devices in our pocket right. yeah, exactly. and, you know, and we're going to have companies like data from us and they're going to try, they're going to keep trying to do it. Um, so I, I think Apple told them to stop it at this point. I think they um, either changed the code or pulled the, or they, they made them change the code. Well, obviously they got called out. So, yeah. <laughs> and it looks like it's, it's a lot, a lot of them is, is a travel uh, type apps like Expedia and Air Canada and uh, uh, Singapore airlines and uh, others uh, that are, are in this list of, of uh, apps that were doing it. So, and I can't even like I'm not even sure what they're trying to get out of that. No, it, I wasn't that. either. So, again, sensationalizing it a little bit, uh, but be aware of it. it. I mean, just watch the terms of service when it, when when you install an app. It's going. I know many <laughs> of us don't read the EULA when it pops Nobody. up. No one ever does. So, if you're real concerned about privacy, uh, you know, uh, you should you know do some double checking. Uh, yeah, flip phone. What's if that? you're really concerned, if you're really concerned with privacy, get a flip phone. Yeah, get a flip phone. That I still to this day, I and I'm sure you see them too. Every day, I I I, I think I was at the airport the other day getting my uh, global uh, entry for my my upcoming international trip, and I'm in there. I'm in there, and I see all these. There's a, there's a bunch of people with flip phones still. I was like, God, oh, how man. could you function with a flip phone? I just just get a basic Android if you're if you're at least of anything, so you at least have some internet connection because. I'm sure the carriers are probably charging these people a ton of uh, money for for just having that flip phone. They, they don't want they don't want that service anymore. They want data and <laughs> their money now. So uh, it just yeah. I don't know it doesn't make sense. Well, anyway, that was all the stories we I we I we I picked out this week and uh, and wanted to uh, uh, have a uh, Warren give us some of his insights. And uh, speaking of insights, I wanted to actually because uh, he is a new guest and the first time on the show. There will hopefully have many to come in the future. Uh, that he uh, we find out what types of iOS is, uh, iOS devices he has, and I have a feeling that him and I are very much alike because oh. I buy everything new and I buy everything when it comes out. <laughs> And yeah. trading, and I mean, you go even more to the extreme. So let's start off. Which which iPhone do you have? I think you beat. I think you're actually worse than me on this on this Am round. I? Okay, yeah, cause you got one thing I don't. Um, so I, right now I'm, uh, I got the uh, um, the 10s Max okay. uh, that I replaced from a 10 uh, from a 10. <laughs> we did. Uh, you you and I both did the same thing. And people probably yeah. shake their heads, just like when we had my debate and you made fun of me, and I was well deserved when I bought the eight, and then a month later, yeah. two months later, I bought the ten. So, so, and my wife beat you on that one because I, she, I made her replace her seven. She got the eight. A week okay. later, she got the ten. Uh, oh, ten oh, oh, I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> She's like, now oh, you're right, you know all that. Um, so I have that. I have a Apple Watch series. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. And I, so I had an iPad, I had last year's iPad Pro, 10.5 um, inch. Which I did. With the, key, yep, with the keyboard and everything like that. And I really never used it. Okay. Um, you know, I just don't. I mean, I, I have two MacBooks now. I have an Air mm. um, and I have a Pro. Okay. Uh, the, new, the new Air, the new Pro. So I, I found myself, and, and I, I always kind of have one at home sure. MacBook and one travel laptop. Gotcha. So uh, I never really, uh, I never really utilized the iPad. Um, so mm -hmm. I sold it, and then I'm like, until I typed you today when I posted that article in Mac for the Future about that two hundred forty nine dollar iPad. <laughs> well, that, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to get the. I'm going to get the new right. Right. I know. I would say, but but people, I I I had, <laughs> I had you in mind when I posted that today, and. 
Yeah. If anybody doesn't know, I mean, as we record this, Amazon had posted uh, they were during a normal time of year, not Christmas, uh, $249 for an iPad um, 9.7 inch, the current version that does support the Apple Pencil. Uh, yep. 32 gigs. So just the Wi Fi, just incredible price. So I bought during uh, the Christmas time, I bought a refurbed iPad Mini 4. Right. Which I. Which I already had one, and I sold it. So, so I, re- I rebought it. I had one, and then I sold it, and then I bought it again because I missed it. Uh, also, because I have um, I have a drone, and the drone you could use. Right, uh, right. You could use a iPad. iPad Mini is actually big in the drone world because um, if it's one of the things that fits in the controller, uh, and, and you can use it to uh, to fly a drone. So, I I guess I got it for that. Um, so with, with the rumor of the new iPad maybe coming, uh, the mini, um, you yep. know, do that, but you know, for now, from, from now I'm pretty much iPad pro list, which is, uh, All right. not like you. Well, I'm not because I do have the iPad pro 11 inch, uh, exactly. yeah. model because I just have to. And then of course I get grieved every time I buy it from the family or well, not necessarily the family, the wife. <laughs> Uh, why are you buying the new model already? You already have this one because I had the 10.5, but you know what? I but sold 10.5 for a pretty good dollar. So yeah, it, no, I did. It paid I, for most of it. So, and that was my, that was my plan too. My plan was to sell the 10.5 and get the 11 instead. And, and, um, and just after thinking about it, I'm like, I'm going to wait to see what, you know, to see if I get it. I need for it. Well, Plus, it, the, the 10s Max is so big now that it's... I love it. I actually, I, I always loved it. I, I, lo- I, I missed it when I had the 10 because the 10 was smaller. Um, yeah. I had the 8 Plus, um, of course, and I had the 7 Plus. Um, so um, I always had the larger size phone. So I was always uh, happy with it. And, you know, uh, so no, I have no, I have no, qual- I have no regrets having the Max. I, I love the screen and it's, it's zippy fast. And when we talk about the case here in a second, I'm even going to add to that uh, that love here um but that's all you got right that's all the, no 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 extras and all no stock because i've said a lot of other guests have told me oh yeah well i've got a couple other phones sitting in the drawer somewhere and <laughs> um no i got some parts of, parts of phone, but I'm, I'm like you i sell so yeah me too I'll, yeah. I'll sell everything and you know keep updated and um you know occasionally we'll keep an extra iPhone around just in case somebody's right to need to swap it out for you know, actually currently right now I have an iPad uh, air, which was originally my air. And then cause the wife had the air two and then I had the, the iPad 9.7 inch and then I moved to the 10.5 inch. And so um, my, uh, my mother-in-law was complaining about it being super slow. She had the air, which actually is not a bad iPad. Actually, It's still supported in iOS 12. Um, so we upgraded her to that $249, 9.7 inch uh, iPad, which is perfect for her because you know, she's playing words with friends and whatever those games, <laughs> and that's about it. But that's, that's, her only, that's, that, that's her only means of computing. So, uh, that's actually funny. Cause my mom, my mom, um, when the 10.5 or the 12 inch iPad came first came out. Oh, she got the first gen, okay, which I she, did have. She bought the first gen 12 inch to watch TV on. Okay. That's right. Um, and she told me that she bought it. And I'm like, that's really an expensive. Yeah, that's twelve hundred dollars, wasn't it at the time? That's whatever it was at the time. She's like, well, it's just my my eyes are so bad. I just need something I can watch a TV right. on. Well, you could buy right. a cheap laptop for that for five hundred bucks. <laughs> you could buy a mon, just buy a mon, like an eighty inch TV for that price. Yeah, before so, that's right. You before you knew me too. I did own both the twelve point five, twelve point nine inch, and the uh, uh, ten point five inch at the same time. Mm, that's yeah. how psycho crazy I am. And I yeah. never, I, I never could get into the big one. Like I, I never even thought I would want it. How how'd you like the twelve? At at first, it was it was big. I mean, the, the, yeah. the old the old the first gen model was 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 very large. Um, and I ended up selling it. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is big, but when I went in and then decided to buy the 11 inch uh, iPad, uh, I looked at the 12.9 and it was pretty good looking. I was tempted because it doesn't, it doesn't, the form factor is a lot smaller than the previous version of the 12.9. Yeah. So, uh, Don't tempt me, man. Don't tempt me. I said, you, you, you and I are, we're, we're, we're like, it's like, we got to have some trouble here. And, uh, we need a brother here. <laughs> That's why we. I think we get along so well. <laughs> so, we need a support group. To, uh, yeah, we uh, do. Well, that's why we're in Back to the Future, right? <laughs> that's our support group. 
<laughs> pretty much. Uh, so, I need I need to change the group so I don't keep buying expensive gadgets. Oh, I know, I know. That's just like everybody says. Uh, if you're if you're on uh, Instagram and you see all the pop ups for Amazon, oh look at this, this is for sale. Shop now, shop now. And people are that they buy things on whim so easily on Instagram. So yeah. I think it's just as bad. So when I tell you about my app pick, that will make more sense too. All right, cool. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's we'll move on. And I want to talk about iPhone cases a little bit, and specifically iPhone cases that come with batteries. Um, I was a big Mophie fan for years. Did you use Mophie uh, cases at all on your phones? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I, I use the Mophie, and I'm going to put that link in the show notes as well. As, uh, Apple came out with a new Apple smart battery case that's for the 10R, the 10S, and the 10S Max. Um, so, but I was a Mo, I was a my Mo, guy forever and ever. But it they started getting big and they started getting a little bulky, and I just started thinking, you know, I'm I'm, I'm getting kind of t- tired of this case a little bit. Uh, plus, you know, you, when you and then the other problem was at the time they they you had to have a it was a USB charger as opposed to um, uh, it was, uh, lightning at the time, uh, so that was a pain because you had both going on, even though it slid into the case and it was uh, what is I always forget the the, the micro USB I think it is. Uh, and, um, so I, I started getting kind of bummed with it and their quality card kind of, kind of dropped a little bit during, during those years. And we're talking about four or five years ago. Yeah. So I, I kind of stopped by Mophie's for a while. So then I went back to regular cases. You know, I had just the, ba- the basic silicon or the leather case uh, that Apple makes. And I've always been happy with it and, uh, it's been great. So, so I saw on your, on the Mac, the future uh, uh, site and Facebook, and you, you said that, Hey, I bought one of these and I said, I'm, I'm tempted but I waited. <laughs> so, and then your first, and your, and your first impressions were, you said that were pretty, pretty, they're, they're good. Um, so, you know, I, I put it back on. So my, my impression, my first impression is it definitely adds bulk and weight right. to it. It's, uh, especially on, on, on the max. That's already pretty big. Um, but it does feel nice. It has yeah. the extra, it has the actual battery indicator for the chair uh, for the case. Um, it has a lightning to lightning connector. Um, so my feeling now is I'm probably going to use it more on like vacations and places like we're going to Disney next month. And, right, right. Uh, con- like always when I go to Disney, I, I always run out of uh, my iPhone battery at some point because um, you're just taking a lot of pictures. You're walking around a lot of things like that. Yeah. So. You know, I'm gonna take it on vacation with me, um, and then I'll, I'll, you know, that's the other thing. It's easy enough to swap out here and there. Unlike the the Morphe cases, were a little bit more, I want to say, permanent, but they were definitely not as easy to right. take on. Um, it's holding up well. I was with the with the silicon here. I'm looking at yeah, now. Me too. With with the silicon cases, I was always concerned about them scratching, especially with the black. I uh, like getting marked up and scratching, but it's actually holding up pretty well um, yeah. on that. Yeah, I had the original silicon case when, when I because I bought it and I, I was hating it because it was getting like it was getting worn like right away, not even like within I can understand six or 12 months of use, but like about a month, I was like, this is ridiculous. So I I traded it in and I went with the leather one for a while. The leather one was okay. Um, uh, but it was still getting beat up, but not at least not as bad as the silicon one was. But the quality of this silicon on this case is is pretty awesome. I mean, compared to yeah. that. Uh, and I'll tell you, my son, when he had his seven, he bought a um, battery case for the seven yeah. off a friend. And it was a little beat up. It was beat up at the time. Right. But that thing got destroyed i've never seen about yeah. i've never seen an apple device get that destroyed and like the top started just coming off right um you know almost the battery was exposed so they they do they're not indestructible or at least they weren't um so you know you do have to watch out uh for that but um and then some people want to know why they don't make it. so <laughs> <laughs> so for me i you know i historically didn't have this is my first one in a long time because yeah. um uh, because um, I went uh, as soon as the uh, the plus phones came out, I was going to plus phones, and they didn't make the battery case for the plus phones. Right. And then I went to the ten, and they didn't have both of that. So uh, this is my first uh, my first one in a long time. Um, but yeah, I like it definitely better than the Morphe ones. Uh, I like that the wireless charger works. My my biggest complaint 
is um, I have a, um, in my car, I have a, um, a wireless car mount that if you put the phone in, it, it automatically it has a motor that grips your mm -hmm. phone. Okay. Or just, it's too big for it. So right now, I gotta if I want to do it, I got to put a, a rubber band around it so it doesn't fall off um, the mount. But I just ordered a different mount from Amazon that's actually coming tomorrow. So mm -hmm. it, it sure it looks like the it looks like the arms that grab it are a little bit further out. So I'm going to see if it works with that. Hmm, okay. Now, um, the other thing is the battery. And I will attest, I don't know if you've, if you've tested it at all. Um, I bought the, you know, this is recording this on Monday. I bought the case on Saturday, used it for a full day on Sunday. Um, and, you know, when you plug it in, because it's a smart uh, case, it's a smart battery, uh, you plug it in, that's the primary battery that it uses. So when you go in and look at the battery uh, meters, it shows the smart case's battery and then it shows the phone's battery. So right now the phone's at 100%. And, I, and after the first day, I think the battery went down to about maybe 11% on the case. So then I'm done for the day. I go put it on my Qi Charge uh, stand that's uh, on, my, uh, on my nightstand, that, that, which, of course, which it does fit, by the way, which I'm pretty psyched about because that has a little stand that it, that, it, that it drops on and just goes up against it like a clock radio, the, the home one, if you don't, if anybody that's familiar, the one I did, uh, recommended for Christmas last year. Um, and uh, so you charge it back up for the day. And then, of course, then it's still using that battery. So it hasn't even touched the iPhone's battery. So I, I think I'm going to test it this time. I'm not going to charge it overnight tonight. And I'm going to let it go, let it go to zero and then go uh, and then start using the iPhone's battery and see what happens. So that's telling me that I would probably be able to get two full days of use for having to do a full charge which to me is pretty impressive. That's great. I'm, I'm actually too chicken to test, uh, test it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just scared that uh, I'm, I'm going to need the battery. I, I'm, I'm historically. Uh, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I said, you, got, you, you and I work are, are, are really much alike. You know that we got to hang out more, you know? <laughs> so, you know, as much as if, if, if there's an outlet and if, if I have a laptop or a phone, I'm, I'm plugged in. And, I get um, obsessed. OCD yeah. with the battery. I got. I can't. Yeah. I, I carry my the brick with me. I got the anchor twenty thousand uh, uh, milliamp battery. I'm always carrying around with me. So I mean, got to have that too. So <laughs> it's, it's the fear of the phone. To I have, have, to have battery. I can't. I, my phone can't be dead. People are like, oh well, my, my phone's dead. No, I can't. Yeah. I can't. I know. It's it's so, uh it's so, just. I, I'm impressed with it. Uh, I'm, I, I mean, I'm assuming that's how it functions. I've looked on Apple's website. I've, you know, so I've done some research on it, and uh, that seems to be what it does. It's a smart, it's a smart battery, so it's, it, it knows that uh, it, it's going to use that as your primary source of power. Because you look up yeah. in the battery gear, it, it actually shows that uh, the, um, uh, the battery is still being charged uh, on the phone itself. So, um, so it's, uh, it, it is. Uh, it, it it is using that as a primary battery, so I'm 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 very impressed with uh, 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 what it does. So um, I was looking at, at Mophie's website, and Mophie does have uh, the uh, uh, does have uh, the case that they're coming out with for the 10s Max. And I'm looking yeah. at it, and actually, it has two separate jacks. It finally has it opens up to where the, the Lightning port is, and it has its own port for the case, which I find to be pretty interesting. It's a wireless and USB C input. On the case itself. Yeah, they moved to that. My son, uh, my son also had a Morphe uh, for he had a Morphe case and it was uh, wireless. I guess they call it the Air, the Air version. Yeah, had, yeah I had the wireless one, and it, it, that was the first of the Qi charging uh, battery cases when it came out, like about a year or two. But then yeah. I, it looks like this hasn't been released yet for the for the Tennis Max. It's, uh, it says quarter one, twenty eight nineteen. So. But I'm looking at the picture of it, and uh, yeah, it looks like this is the first time I, I, I can recall that uh, that Mophie actually is exposing both the, the the jack for the case itself and for the phone. I'm just I'm just like you, I, as far as being worried about it. I've had yeah. I don't know if you've had the problem, but I've had at least three of those cases. Uh, the the micro USB connector. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> break inside of it three times and uh yep. that just turned me off from, from it uh at that point i remember the company being pretty good because so all three times i remember contacting I, them i've sent it and, and they're they're a u.s-based company they're actually based in michigan so um yeah, yeah. yeah i've shipped stuff to, to them before so but uh, so those are two good choices if, if anybody's looking to have a 
or get a battery for their iPhone. Um, obviously, this the smartphone case is only for the 10s, the 10r, and the 10s uh, Max. Uh, there is an old one that's still, I think, available. I think it was for the iPhone 7, not the iPhone 8, right? That old phone, the old case. But it works for the 8. Right? It did work. Yeah. It yeah. works for the 8, yeah. Um, and then Mofi. I mean, those, those are the only ones I really would recommend. Um, there are others they out there. They need more colors, uh, the yeah. Apple one. Yeah, this one only has black and then what was it, white? Black and white, and nobody was getting the white. So. Yeah, and then the white they turned black real quick. <laughs> so. and, then, and then yeah, and then yours wasn't uh, was fully dead when you bought it. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Right? That was the other thing is it wasn't charged. Yeah, I had to charge it for yeah. all night. So somebody read a story to said that it might have to do with the international shipping, and there they weren't yeah. allowed to have charged devices. Who knows. But the phones are. That's what I was. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Anyway, that's those are cases, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have links in the show notes for both Mophie and the Smart Case, so you can take a look at it. And uh, we'll move on. Let's talk a little bit about two-factor authentication. We did touch upon it earlier in the article that was uh, out there uh, about that that wonderful person suing Apple for not being able to change it after two weeks. Um, and I, and I have a note how important really it is these days to really you should have to. Your, your, all your accounts pr- uh, protected this way. Um, your Apple ID has the option. If you if you don't have that enabled now, enabled now, you're crazy. Now, one of the things I did encounter with uh, when I was helping my friend um, set up his new phone, because you know Apple is very quick at when you exchange a phone that uh, it uh, uh, it you turn it in and they want to erase the old phone, then you start you could just restore it from your iCloud backup and then. The way they've got it worded when you go through and actually go through the process to say, you know, because you have to do it manually because now, you know, I would have told them, hey, let's let's hold on to the other phone and do it automatically so you can, you can sync all this information right from the other phone, iPhone. So, um, but what, what, confuses, what confuses people is when you go and, and it asks, well, you want to activate this phone, you got to get two-factor authentication on another device. Well, of course, you're not, if you don't have an iPad or a Mac, or, or are you going to get that code? Well, the good thing is, I guess I didn't realize it because of the way it's worded in the, the pro, into the steps is uh, as long as the phone, it sees the phone has the SIM card from that line in the phone, you can just click, you know, send code and then it just goes on and continues. So you would think Apple would put something in there that says, you know, this is what you do, don't you think? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I, I mean, I, I've seen I, I, And this is fresh in my mind from experiencing Saturday. So uh, it just, you know, so just be aware if you if you do activate your own phone for the first time, as long as you have the SIM card in uh, the phone, uh, the new iPhone that you replaced it with, um, and you go to, to run through the steps, uh, and when it asks to send the code, you say send code. It just says okay, and it keeps going because it knows that that's the that's the phone. So, uh, but uh, anyway, the two factor authentication just super important um, because. If for for some reason, if you were to lose your phone or if you lose your device, and then someone tries to sign in uh, for the first time, and it sees, it, it, it it's going to ask you to, to to go through a second factor to to, to approve uh, the the use of uh, your device, and to have that code and for it to send that code and instead of it being through text message, which is very insecure, you know, as in which you agree, SMS is not a secure thing to use. That's uh, correct. Yeah, and then and the funny thing is, all these banks and all these other you know companies that you would think should be secure are using text all the time because it's an easy way out because they don't want to deal with two factor authentication. So, uh, so Apple just sets it up. So then, what happens is, if you have an iPad, it'll show up on your iPad. If you have a Mac, it'll show up on your Mac, and it just says, "Okay, can you authenticate that this device is is legit? Signing into this account, and then it'll give you the code." type the code in and voila, you're done. And with two-factor authentication in itself, you know, a lot of companies are even doing this now. Now there's other, there's a, there's other uh, two-factor um, tools out there besides uh, Apple's for their, uh, for their ID, uh, including Microsoft and Google. Um, I'm assuming you've used that because you, what well, we've both worked with the corporate in the corporate world. Uh, yeah. Microsoft has the authenticator. Google Authenticator, yeah, and the Microsoft. Authenticator, yep. And then there's Authy is another one. Um, yeah, I heard about that. And then it's One Password. One Password is another one that uh, does have a two-factor authentication feature. Um, and then, of course, other password managers have it as well, but that's my my favorite password manager of choice. I'm assuming it is yours as well. <laughs> uh, I'm bad. I need to uh, I need to get on the uh, One Password train. 
Oh, you haven't seen. used your password? Okay, I didn't. I thought, I thought you were a one password user. No, I mean, there's no reason why I shouldn't should should not be doing it. So I should really get onto it. I just pure laziness of uh, yeah. of, of starting it. So. Unfortunately, when, as I said, with banks, banks a lot of times don't want to go through the, the hassle of having to maintain a, a two-factor authentication tool. Um, many corporate companies now are doing it by using Microsoft's uh, two-factor uh, uh, authenticator tool. And what it does is it basically gen generates a code every 15 seconds. And probably some of you have probably seen, if you get really secure, it's got those fobs that you have with the, with the number generator. RSA. The RSA, RSA ones, yeah, the RSA ones, yep. And uh, I, I know some some folks that have those, and that's what they have to do every time they want to get on their VPN. Uh, so that's the, another factor of, of, of security. And a lot of they're still out there. I mean, the authenticator apps are supposed to replace, replace those, right. those, so you don't have to carry around the extra device. But a lot of places still do have those uh, out there. Um, there was. Yeah. There was a great article, and I'm going to link it into the show notes uh, from the from uh, Intego, the Mac Security blog, and talking about two-factor authentication. Uh, uh, Kirk uh, McInerney, uh, he uh, wrote up a nice article about this. So I'll link back in the show notes for that. Uh, but uh, these these are a lot of the tools that you really should uh, be considered using, especially Google. Google does it on their on their on their um, apps, and we know how well people keep their Google accounts secure, right? <laughs> Actually, Facebook has one. Uh, Facebook has one. I, I, don't, I don't use it, but they have one yeah. too. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're starting. And then the way to get uh, how, to, how to use the, the, the app, they're, they're using QR codes that you can scan with your camera to get authorization. Um, so yeah. there's any of a number of ways of doing this. So um, uh, have you experienced anything else as far as uh, any ones we've talked about uh, relates to, to Vector? Um, not really. I mean, the thing you said with the text messages, uh, not you know, <laughs> not secure, but Apple, so Apple has a thing now where it will read, if it does send you a text message, it will automatically read the code and, and, and put it through for you, which is kind of neat. Um, my, my only thought is we're, we're wearing Apple watches. There's gotta be a way to right. utilize that as a two factor authentication protocol because it, it's, I could unlock my Mac with it. Right. Which I do. Uh, yeah. So in other words, if I'm trying to log into a new device, that device should be able to see the watch and say, hey, he's here. Um, but well, we'll see. Uh, the only problem I have with the two-factor authentication is on um, if you ever install Windows, uh, iCloud for Windows, mm -hmm. if you ever have to work with Windows machine. No, no. Um, it, it just, it's terrible. It's just out of the blue. Every, every so often, it just keeps pro it will prompt again for the, uh, the code. For no reason. Yeah. Um, I remember you posted that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you know, you're using Windows. We have to check again to make sure, uh, make sure it's still you. But yeah, uh, uh, take a look at the information we've got on our show notes. Uh, but uh, highly recommend. Uh, we both highly recommend that you that you take take advantage of two factor authentication. I know it's a pain, but you know what? Protect yourself because. You never know. These these hackers out there are getting skill have have better skills every single day, and we're hearing it every day with all the, all these uh, these hacks that have been happening. So, uh, check it out. So, um, uh, next thing I want to talk about a little bit, and of course this is going to probably be a little tougher for you because you don't have an iPad, or you do, but you don't have one with pencil. Uh, I have many, yeah. Uh, is the uh, there are uh, I, I'm uh, actually using uh, iMore's uh, article that just was uh, written, written a couple days ago. Uh, seven things you didn't know you could do with the Apple Pencil, uh, and a couple of things that it's that it's uh, that it's lists. I'm going to talk about a little bit is, and I'm sure you knew this, uh, that you could replace the tip of your Apple Pencil uh, because it 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 can get worn down over time. And, and I think about it, I've you know I've had pencils for like the last two years. I don't think I've ever remember wearing down my pencil's uh, tip. Yep. I've I've had a I had the pencil for the uh, ten point five and yeah. I could I could count on zero fingers how many times I actually used the pencil so oh so it's just, uh, so this is probably not a good topic for you so. well I mean I would, I'm wanting to and I'm like I really want to use this pencil for something but I'm like I don't know it, I'm I'm not very creative and I'm not very artistic I, I drew uh, stick figures right, here right <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. That's that's the first step to talking. Uh, one of the one of the uh, things uh, they talk about. It's very easy to replace. It just the end the end of the pencil just unscrews. 
and then you can get another you can get an extra tip and they they sell like a four pack uh through apple does for uh 19 bucks so um second thing uh what you you may not know is being able to tilt the pencil to shade and press for pressure so when you draw using the apple pencil you can easily shade an area and there you go you were talking about doing stick figures and shading and all that stuff um so you you can you can uh, uh tilt the apple pencil towards one side and then move the flat side of the pencil to tilt to shade it in just as you would using an analog pencil on a, on, on paper i never heard of them calling it an analog pencil a number two pencil maybe uh i, I love that term analog pencil <laughs> it, what was the poison that the, the pencils were made out before yeah it was, it was, I don't well know. they used to be uh they used to be lead they used to make be made out of lead and then they went to graphite yeah so we're 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 that old we're uh it's analog lead <laughs> no crazy quill um, so the, that's the cool thing about the pencil and and and, that, and that's what I'm saying. For those of you who are in the market for uh, for an iPad, um, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, gosh, take a take a look at that Amazon deal for two hundred forty nine dollars. Even if you were to buy the the the, the low end uh, iPad for full for full price at three twenty nine, and you can get the pencil for I think like ninety five bucks. Um, what a combination! And just to have something simple to, to for drawing, um, you can't beat it, don't you think? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you could also get the crayon uh, now. Yeah, even. Logitech has the crayon, which is the, is the third-party brand. Um, that yeah. one, cool. so, and that's cheaper. It's, it's, it's like 45 bucks, I think, it is, so. Yeah, Again, um, I, but it only works with that 9.7 inch. And, uh, we also got to stress, too, there's two pencils. There's a, the the, the first-gen pencil only works with the, the 9.7 inch and any of the older iPads, and then the the uh, pencil two, which is with the Pro, That's that only works with the Pros, so go ahead. And the, the one with the the new one with the pro does a little fancier tricks. Um, well, the double tapping. There's a double tap, yeah. And the iPad recognizes it a little different, and I guess it also sticks to the side. It's magnetic. To charge. That's yes. the one advantage you have with the pencil on the pro is it's yeah. magnetic. It just you 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 attach it to the to the side of the iPad and it, and it charges it, which is awesome. Right. Because. Which is, it, the yeah. biggest complaint of the the first gen yeah. was it looks so uh, dorky that you had to take the pencil oh, terrible. take the cap off which of course a lot of people probably lose and then yeah. plug it into the into the lightning jack uh well they did have that that uh lightning to lightning adapter where you could plug the cable and then plug the pencil in that way too which everybody everybody lost that one, they so. lose that one too so yeah. um in fact i think i still have it and i probably never gave it yeah, i do <laughs> in my drawer here uh Yep, there it is. I had one that went on my keychain, I think. Yeah, you there it is. That, that, yeah. I, I don't need this anymore. Um, I probably should give that to the person <laughs> I sold it to. Uh, and she probably, in fact, she doesn't, obviously, she hasn't said anything to me, so she obviously knows, oh, that's fine to plug that pencil in the bottom of the, of the iPad. So, yeah, uh, so uh, other thing that uh, it has is palm rejection. Um, and that was always the annoyances of the, the using the previous iPad styly was that uh, you had to, hold your hand in such a way where if you didn't rest your palm on the iPad. Um, so with the, uh, the Apple pencil and the iPad pro, it has near perfect palm rejection. So there's, there's your other, there's your other advantage as far as having the pro versus the non pro version. Um, check in the, the pencil's battery, which can be a pain. And, and also this is also the place I was checking to where the smart, the smart case uh, battery was and my Apple watch. <clears throat> so, it shows up in that in that list on your iPad too. Well, of course, the Apple Watch doesn't show up on your iPad. It would only be the the pencil and the iPad's battery. Uh, so you 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 go into into the notification center. You swipe from from left to right. And it'll show that notification in there with the battery, and then it tells you what how much uh, battery is left in the pencil. Now, the cool thing with the new with the pen, with the iPad Pro, when you attach the pencil to the side and the magnetic. Uh, uh, catches it. It does have the little icon that shows up. It says pencil, and then the percent comes right up on the screen for you as soon as you attach it. So versus versus the uh, the old pencil, it doesn't do that. And we just talked about uh, the double tapping of switching modes uh, in the second gen uh, Apple pencil. It's got a flat surface. You do tap tap, and uh, Apple. In fact, uh, they demonstrated this during uh, the the, uh, the last keynote for uh, when the iPad was introduced at uh, Adobe with Photoshop's going to be coming out and taking advantage of that double that tap tap or you know, moving into different modes, that kind of stuff. Uh, that one seems to be pretty cool too. Um, and you also can make changes to that too. And uh, 
Also, the other thing I didn't know too is tracing through paper. I don't know if you saw this in here. Uh, you can actually uh, write on your iPad through a, through paper using the Apple Pencil. Of course, uh, you don't want to do it on thick paper, but standard print paper, you, it should work just fine. It's useful if you like want to trace something like draw in, into a drawing of an app. So who knew? Who knew? I didn't know that. Did you? I did not. I know there's, um, I don't know if it's a tip or not, but there's um, a screen protector for the iPad um, yeah. that is sort of, it's clear, but it's got a paper texture to it. And people say if you do a lot of uh, pencil on the iPad, it feels more like writing on paper. Yeah. And then they like it. So um, I'll try to find a link to that if you want to put that in notes. Yeah, yeah. So, if you uh, think about it, go and throw it in our notes here. Um, yeah. Uh, it gets mixed, mixed review. It, it's, it's basically great for drawing on the iPad and okay for a screen protector is kind of the reviews it gets. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, the, uh, Check this article out. We, 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 I always like linking to articles because we've got folks that are very knowledgeable out there. But, you know, you listening to us tell, tell you about it and gives us, you, you, you get some of my, our insights uh, to what, uh, what these things do and have experience with it. So, yeah, the pencil is, is a pretty awesome device. And uh, obviously, you've got to just decide which, one, which iPad's best for you. And at least now you have choices. Because before you had no choice, you had one choice. Now you have two. So now I started this show not wanting an iPad Pro. And now, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> man, they look so pretty. Yeah. That, that pencil, I know I'll never use it, but you just got to have it. Mm-hmm. It's calling it's call to me. So, uh, all right, we're, we're moving on to this part of the show that we have some app picks. I picked one app, uh, but I'm, I'm waiting with interest. You said you have an app that, that uh, you wanted to share with everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of looked at my phone. I'm like, yeah, what do I use all the time? But the one that kind of popped out, um, I have a couple shopping apps, but one's called Deal News. Uh, oh, yeah. D- yeah. So, you know, it, it's great for people uh, who want to look for sales on uh, mm-hmm. certain things. But um, what they do a lot under the electronics section is um, they'll, uh, they'll find a app uh either for iOS or Android that's either really on sale or free. Yeah. Uh, that That's normally not. So it's a good place to look if you're looking for, you know, a, a nap. Um, and the other day they had one that was free. I don't know if it's still free out there, but it's called uh, Just Talk. Mm-hmm. It's basically a, a voice. It's a, it's a dictation um, app. You, you um, launch it, you dictate it, and then there's options to, email what you just dictated or copy and paste or, or uh, Facebook it or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that was something that was, according to them, normally $10 that was free the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, take a look at the, uh, it's also a dangerous uh, pro, uh, dangerous app to deal news because, you know, you'll go on there and it says, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the electronic section and, uh, you know, yeah, here's, here's a nice, uh, uh, they, uh, they they had the fully maxed out 2018 15-inch Pro LA computer, I think, for uh, $3,200. Um, oh, my gosh. $800 off or something like that. And I'm like, ah, I shouldn't be looking at this stuff. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, that's my pick. All right. Well, I have a free app, so you can, you'll can rest assured you'll you'll be able to jump on this. And if, I, would, I would assume you've played with this before. It's uh, It's Apple Clips. And Clips is a, is a great little app. It's free. Apple designed it. So it allows you to be able to do some kind of fun things with videos and, and uh, posters and photos and call outs. And I, I, did, I did a video for someone who was retiring uh, um, last week. They wanted to send us uh, send a video since she, uh, she was out on the East Coast. And I'm, I'm here in the Midwest. So, so what I did was I recorded. It, it has, and this is, and and and, and I, I just had found out that this only is available on the the 10s and or the 10, the 10s and the 10 10R and 10s Max uh, is scenes. And what it is is you, you tap scene, you tap the scenes button here, and there's all kinds of scenes here. Like right now, I've I've got one where it's showing me that uh, I got the the uh, the clouds behind me, and uh, it's picking things up here. You can. There was another scene where it looked like I was, and that's when I use. It looks like I'm in the Wild West, and it's got the mountains behind me. And and you can type, and uh, you can talk, and you can record the video, and it's a uh, pretty cool. Uh, some some uh, some cool uh, 
different scenes that you could play with. And I know it's probably not, probably many of other things like what Instagram does really, where you can start doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it. Have you used this app before? I installed it like when it first came out. Yeah. I haven't looked at it in a while. I played with it when it first came out and, you know, I, uh, I didn't think it was bad. I, it was yeah. good at the time, but I just, uh, yeah, it kind of got lost in the shuffle of all my other apps. So I'll definitely look at it again because, uh, yeah, no, and I got a link to it. I have a link to it in the show notes. They actually have an a, a app has a pretty cool website. Um, that, uh, it's easy to remember apple.com slash clips. And it actually shows, uh, what it can do. It gives you all the things that you can do just like Apple does with their websites. They show sure getting, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, when it first came out, wasn't it kind of, it was limited to like a very short. Yeah. And that's what it is. Yeah, you, but, but, I, but this last one I recorded, no, I, pro- I probably recorded it for about a minute. It, it's not, it's not for something real lengthy. That's why they call it clips. You, know, <laughs> you want to do something. Clips. If you, but, but of course iMovie is available um, on, uh, on iOS as well, uh, as well as with Mac OS, but, uh, and you can do video editing with that. Um, so it, uh, and it's easy to share, which is cool. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, and I can't, I can't say I, 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 I not have fun with it. So, um, anything else you have in mind and apps or any other things that you've, uh, you're experiencing with iOS as of late or before we, before we wrap it up here? No, not really. I mean, uh, you know, just standard things I'm on all the time, uh, Facebook and, uh, you love Facebook. <laughs> you're one of the few, few people I never hear belly came that much about facebook i'm sure you do a little but we all do but i, I could sit here and complain about it but you know what it's 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 done more good than harm and oh, yeah. just, I, i'm fine with it it doesn't bother me just don't don't just air don't 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 air your dirty laundry you know yeah that's the thing you gotta yeah you gotta you gotta learn how to you gotta have somewhat thick skin and a sense of humor and oh, for what, sure. And and when you get past that and don't take it so seriously, then it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. So yeah. So, well, I can't thank you enough for being here, Warren, and I uh, definitely would love to have you come back at another time because we're keeping my rotation of guests coming onto the show, and we're having a lot of fun doing that with here. I'll talk anytime. About this. Anytime. And um, tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. And we talked about at the beginning of the show, and tell and you can give a little more information about Mac to the future. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really tweet or Instagram so much. Uh, yeah, you're all Facebook, I know. <laughs> I'm on Facebook. I have an email. I have like 20 email addresses that nobody needs to have. Because no, that's fine. Who cares? Uh, so find me on Facebook. If um, I, I'm in a bunch of the Apple groups, but uh, I moderate the uh, Mac to the Future group. No. Uh, I am a moderator in a couple of the others out there, but just uh this one's my baby, um, more or less. I try to go ahead. It is because every time I see a post, not even a two seconds later, there's a reply from Warren. <laughs> but my my uh, my Which is S Max is sort of part of my hand at this point. When Apple can figure out how to like attach it to my face, that's uh, it will be even worse at that point. But they're getting there. Um, so yeah, join the group. Um, yeah, please. Uh, and and participate in there. Yeah, I can't I can't recommend it more. Like I said, I. I stumbled upon it because I was, you know, uh, you, you and I are, are, were connected because of Guy, Guy Cyril. And, uh, and of course, I connected with Guy from MacStock. And we're still trying to twist your arm to come to MacStock here this year. Uh, One it's, day. it's our fifth year. So uh, they just they just put out the uh, the post for the early bird specials. We'll start talking about that in the next like, future episodes. episodes so, uh, but we, we would love to have you come out. Uh, and, uh, you know, Guy's the star. Guy's, Guy and Tim are the big stars of that, of that show. Uh, it's some uh, some piece of it anyway, you know. Uh, that's oh yeah, <laughs> I do. Uh, I do work. So, uh, I uh, I also uh, do some work for Tim and. Uh, oh, do you? I'm, okay, Tim Tim Roberts. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm I'm a reviewer. Oh, that's my, right. That's right. For uh, for my my Mac Yeah, so that's that's a that's a great gig because they'll send me things to play with, and uh, a lot of times I get to keep it. So um, they asked me, and I I kind of. Just didn't do it. I guess I regret not doing it now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 fun. Um, you know, of, of course, my gadget drawer is full of crap that I'll probably never use again. But it, it's it's fun. All right. So, well, uh, uh, we really appreciate you uh, coming on to the show. 
And with that, this is a wrap. Uh, please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address at feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there at the top. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And again, Warren, thanks for being here. Uh, we really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you again. Thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next time.